Hi, I'm Priyanka Prakash, Senior Staff Writer at Fundera, and today I'll walk you through how to fill out IRS Schedule K-1. Pass-through entities, including S-Corps, LLCs, and partnerships, must provide each owner with a Schedule K-1. There are different types of Schedule K-1 forms, depending on which type of business entity you have. Today, we'll look at a common one, Schedule K-1 for Form 1065, which applies to LLCs and partnerships. Let's get right to it. For starters, fill out the calendar year or tax year for which you're filling out the form. In this case, it'll be the calendar year 2018. Most business owners watching this will leave these two boxes at the top of the form unchecked. You would only check off final K-1 if you are winding down your business. And you would only check off amended K-1 if you've already sent out your Schedule K-1 and are changing or updating some of the information that appeared on that original form. In part one, you'll fill out some basic information about the partnership or LLC, starting with the partnerships or LLC's employer identification number, which is a nine-digit number. We'll make up a EIN for our fictional business in this example. And our business will be called ABC Bakery. LLC based in New York. You can find out the IRS Center where the partnership filed its tax return by looking at your most recent partnership tax return, Form 1065 or by asking your accountant or a tax professional. The center will depend on the state where your business is located as well as the amount of business assets you have. In this example, for a small New York business, the answer will be Department of the Treasury IRS in Kansas City, Missouri. Some types of limited partnerships are publicly traded partnerships, but most businesses watching this uh, will leave this blank and move on to part two. In part two, you'll provide identifying information for the partner for whom you're filling out the Schedule K-1. Remember that you'll need to provide a Schedule K-1 to each partner of the business or member of the LLC. Partners identifying information is their social security number. And now you'll type in the partner's name and address. In this case, let's say you're filling out the Schedule K-1 for Patty Partner, who is a New York City resident. In item G, check off the type of partner that the person is for whom you're completing the form. A general partner is someone who actively participates in the day-to-day -day functions of the business. A limited partner is someone who invests in the business but does not participate actively in day-to-day -day decision making. In this case, let's say Patty Partner is a general uh, partner of the business. In item H, check off whether the partner is a US-based domestic partner or a foreign partner. In this case, Patty is a domestic partner since she lives in New York City. In item I1, you note the type of entity that the partner is, and the default answer here is individual. Skip item I2 unless the partner is a retirement plan like an IRA or SCP. Item J is important because this is where you list the partner's share of the business profits, losses, and capital. These percentages should be based on your partnership agreement or LLC operating agreement. 
In our example, let's say that Patty owns ABC Bakery along with one other person and they have a 60-40 split with Patty being the majority owner. I'm going to list 60% as the beginning and ending percentages in this table. Rarely these beginning and ending percentages might be different if, for example, you admitted a new owner to the business midway through the year, but usually they end up being the same. Businesses that follow cash basis accounting can skip items K and L. If you use accrual basis accounting, you will want to fill out the partner's share of different types of liabilities and do a capital account analysis and indicate what type of accounting method you are using. Some appreciated property might have a built-in tax gain or loss. We'll assume in this example that Patty did not contribute any such property. In Part 3 of Schedule K-1, you'll list the partner's share of the business's current year income, deductions, credits, and other items. The first box here, Line 1, is for ordinary business income or loss if the partnership took a loss. Let's say in this example that the LLC generated $100,000 in ordinary business income. Patty's share of income is 60%, so in this line I'll put in her share of the income, which is 60000 Other popular line items in Part 3 include guaranteed payments for partnerships that allow this, interest income perhaps from an interest-bearing business checking or savings account, distributions if you take money out of the business for a partner, Section 179 deductions for equipment, other business deductions, and self-employment earnings. Let's proceed to fill in some of those boxes in our example. In most cases, self-employment earnings is going to match up with the number in line 1 because all income attributable to a partner or member from the business is subject to self-employment taxes. When you give a copy of the Schedule K-1 to the partner or member, they'll see on page 2 where each of the numbers listed in Part 3 should go on their personal tax return. The summary is for partners and members who file Form 1040. For example, interest income would appear on line 2B of Form 1040. Now you might have to fill out more boxes in Part 3 if you have a more complicated business situation. For example, you have foreign investors or you use accrual basis accounting. But that's it for Schedule K-1 for the majority of small businesses that use cash basis accounting. Remember that you have to provide a Schedule K-1 to each partner or member in the business and you should use the appropriate type of Schedule K-1 for your business entity. If further questions come up as you're filling out the form, we suggest getting help from your accountant or tax attorney. In addition, services like Tax Slayer Self-Employed can also help you fill out Schedule K-1 and other business tax forms. Thanks for watching everybody. Follow us at fundera.com slash blog for more small business information and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.